Today, we're creating a countdown timer. Okay, I wanna put this into its own video because it can seem quite daunting to work with expressions and it's really not, but it's easy to say that once you know it. So what I'm gonna do is reference this in future videos, but it makes sense that we just talk about each line and how we come to create a countdown. And it's not that difficult. So go ahead and create a new composition. Let's just call this final render. And it's 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second. And the duration is just the length of time that I want my countdown to be happening. So obviously I've got a five minute countdown. My duration is five minutes. If I had a 10 minute countdown, 10 minutes. Click OK. And then what I'm going to do is select my text layer and just type something. I, I'm going to call it time. It doesn't matter. It's going to change in a second anyway. Control Alt and Home will center my anchor point into the middle of my layer. And then Control Home will center that into the middle of the actual composition. Then what I'm going to do is make sure I've got effect controls so I can see that by clicking on window effect controls and what I want to do is make sure that my layer is selected and right click here and just click on expression controls and add a slider. So now what I can do is I can add some integer of some sort up here a number of some sort. Then I want to click on the drop down here and on the text properties I want to just click on that and hold alt and click on the stopwatch next to source text. What this allows us to do is write some JavaScript in this box. And so what I can say is time. So this, this text layer of time is going to be equal to the time. So right now it's it's naught, and as we increment, it's going to be naught, one, two, three. The problem that we've got is obviously we've got all the milliseconds which is it which is coming after it. So um, what we can do is we can use a function around this and we can do math.floor time. And what that'll do is until you reach a whole number, go down to the next whole number. So in this instance, it's going to be naught until it's one, and then it's going to be one until it's two, and it just gets rid of all of the, the float numbers. So naught, one, two, three. So we've got a very basic clock. Then what we can do is delete this, and I can say slider is equal to, and I'm going to parent this to my slider. So right now, the way expression works is it you could write a thousand lines and it will only render the last line. So as long as the last line is what you want to spit out to the user, that's that's what that's what it, it, it cares about. So slider equal to slider effect. This is the last line. It's the only line. It's the last line in this box. So it will render it to the user. So in this case, we're saying slider is equal to this number, which means it's going to be the last line. Slider is equal to 33. It'll be rendered to the user. So. 33. Obviously, this is just a static number though, so no matter how much I move forward down my, you know, down the timeline, nothing changes. So what we can do is we can say countdown is equal to slider minus math.floor time. So as we've seen a second ago, we had time, which was 0, 1, 2, 3, as time went on. So what we're saying here is 33 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so we've got this basic countdown so what we should see is 33 minus 1 33 minus 2 33 minus 3 and so on so now we've got a basic countdown the problem that we've got here is obviously this doesn't handle negative numbers and it doesn't handle anything larger than a minute so if we said 300 for five minutes we've got 300 seconds and it's just going to keep on counting down from 300 seconds and it'll just go infinitely unless well the duration of our composition so what i'm going to do is i'm going to break this down a little bit further and we want to create some minutes so i'm going to say we can do this with basic maths minutes is equal to countdown divided by 60 so there's 60 seconds in a minute now obviously what we might get here though is once it goes to 299 seconds so once we're one second in we're going to get a load of random characters uh, random integers at the end of it so 4.98333 recurring now like we've just done a second ago we can do math.floor and wrap that down so the first second which is 300 we floored it down and it's five and then we go one second in and we floor it down it's now four which means we're five minutes four minutes we'll get to a point three minutes two minutes one minute and so on you get the idea now we can do the same with 
seconds and we can say six is equal to um, countdown modulus 60 so what's left over so we've got 59 so on and then we get down to the very bottom 0 59 so now we've got minutes and seconds now obviously it's not rendering minutes because as we said a second ago it only renders the last line so in this instance seconds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return minutes which is our variable here and then I'm going to concatenate other stuff onto it so concatenate you just use a plus so plus and then I use some string and I'm going to say a colon plus seconds so the minutes that we wrote here plus the seconds that we wrote here with a colon between them and just return that back to the user and there you go we've got a basic clock countdown that's happening at the moment now the problem that we've got is we'll have instances like this so if it's less than 10 it just renders the single digit which is ex it's doing exactly what we've told it but um, what we want, want is a zero in front of that and to get that what we can do is create a function so a function is just what we've got here math.floor that's just a function we can create our own custom functions so we start a function by saying function and then we can call it something I, and again th this can be called anything monkey if we wanted it to but what I'm going to do is it makes sense to logically name your functions so add zero and then I open my parentheses and close them and then I open my curly brackets and close them so what we can do in here is pass in a parameter that parameter can be used within this this block so for example if I said add a zero and I said n for number and then here I said return n so this is a pointless function right now but it's a function nevertheless and so if I said add zero and I wrapped it around our seconds we're just going to return the number like nothing nothing's going to change here because we just um, to render this out to the user the last line what we've done is we've taken the seconds we've put put it into add a zero but we've just returned the number straight away so if I said return time or you know monkey let's go with monkey what we'll just get is add sec seconds we're passing in the second 59 58 57 so on we put it into we put a number into there but we don't do anything with that mo number we just return monkey and monkey is just returned back to the user now obviously that's a pretty pointless function well it depends on which way you look at it so what we can do is we can do some logic in here so what we can say is if number is less than 10 we want to do something so here what we're going to say return um, zero plus our number else return number so very straightforward what we're saying is if the number is less than 10 so it's a single digit nine eight seven six five four three two we're going to return a zero in front of it plus the number itself so nine eight seven six five so on else we're just going to return the number so if it's greater so it's 21 22 23 so on it's just going to return itself so let's go back to our uh, timeline and look at that and we get a perfect working countdown okay so next point what we need to do is we need to handle the negative numbers so if I come over here and say 10 10 seconds and I hit spacebar well, let's just go down to two seconds to now it's just going to keep on going indefinitely so what we can do is we can add some logic around this and just like we've got in our function up here we can add an if statement down here and say right okay if countdown is less than zero we want to do something we want to show zero 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 else we want to show our minutes and seconds I don't like how the it automatically indents on in this expression engine uh, expression box um, so what we're saying here so we've got countdown as a timer further up uh, let's just make this box a little bit higher so we've got countdown up here and and that is equal to slider minus floor so that's that's still a variable that we can use it just means we're not rendering it back to the user so once this hits zero just return 
zero colon zero zero. So if this is minus one minus two minus infinity, it will just return naught colon naught naught. If it's greater than zero, it means there's still a countdown. We're just going to return our variables that we set earlier with our zeros. Now you might have guessed as well. If we wanted to, we can add add zero to our minutes. So we've got we we're obviously at ten seconds. Naught naught ten. We play that. We get down to zero, and it's just returning naught naught. And if we wanted to have naught naught, we could say naught naught there. So now we've got our basic countdown. Personal preference, I just prefer minutes without the zero, but it it doesn't it doesn't matter. So what we can say here is 300 seconds, five minutes, and we've got our countdown. As I say, I'm going to be referencing this in future videos. So I wanted to create a central point that I could refer back to. If you do have any questions or any concerns or you know something's not working, please feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. But until next time, guys, peace and love.